Another area that, that we've spoken about before that you have to be mindful of is a lot of people are exhaling and saying, wow, we got it done, that's great. But, you know, you have, you have I guess, the, the way I look at, at it, where there are really a couple of different types of individuals. There are some people now, because of the increase in the exemption, who can feel like, wow, I don't have to pay attention to estate planning anymore, the exemption is $10 million, it's indexed for inflation, I'm never going to be subject to an estate tax, so I really don't have to worry about it. Well, a couple of things come to mind for people in that situation. One of them is a lot of states, like New York, for example, have an exemption that's still only $1 million. So a lot m more people may be subject to some kind of an estate tax than they think they are. And we can't forget about that. Um, in addition to that, you know, now that we've done a lot of this planning, it's incumbent upon everyone to review their wills and go back to that. Because now that the exemption has increased so much, you know, there may be provisions in the will that don't make sense in light of the fact that uh, the, you know, the estate and gift exemption has been unified at this very high rate. So everyone should now go back while they have the opportunity and review their wills and other estate planning documents and make sure that things are the way that they want them to be. So even though I, this big exemption sounds like a great benefit, and in most cases it will be, it may not literally accomplish what you want. You may not want a $10 million credit shelter trust for the benefit of your spouse or something like that. Yeah, and there's a lot of flexibility you can build into wills because, as we said before, you know, we think things are permanent, but who knows what permanent means? You know, in terms of planning, also, let's say, well, let's say you're a very wealthy person. You're fortunate enough to have $25, $50 million of wealth, so we still need to do, we still need to do planning. That person can exhale and say, wow, I did all the planning I need to do, you know, now I'm done. Well, maybe we shouldn't, we shouldn't say that so quickly. You know, under, under some of the, um, the things that were thrown into President Obama's budget and things that have been spoken about previously, there are a lot of estate planning techniques that the government could look at in terms of revenue raisers to try to take out of the law. The ability to use these generation skipping trusts for long periods of time. The ability to take discounts on gifts or sales of business interests. That's something that's been looked at to be abolished for years the ability to use grantor trusts, which we've spoken about, which is a tremendous estate planning opportunity that maybe can be taken out of the law and, and, and won't be able to use on a go-forward basis. Uh, so these things are important to take a look at now because even though maybe we've accomplished a lot of great things, there could be more to be accomplished before there are changes in the law and we can't, um, you know, we can't go back and, uh, and do additional things. So on the one hand, it seems like there's been almost a gift by extending these things. On the other hand, everything's sort of up for review anyway. So who knows how long a lot of these things will be available. Right, and if you're a wealthy person, a 40% estate tax rate, 50% close to it if you're in New York, that's still a big deal. It's a lot of money and it's important to do our normal planning. They're still planning to take a look at to see if people are going to have liquidity needs at first or second deaths. Uh, you know, you want to make sure that you can pass on your business interests and other assets to your children and grandchildren tax efficiently. So, you know, we can't forget about this stuff, even though, you know, we were given a tremendous um, opportunity here with the uh, with the exemptions increased so-called permanently. The rates are still high and there's still a tremendous amount of planning to be done, whether, you know, you're a moderately wealthy person or a tremendously wealthy person. So the key is not to sit back and sit on your hands just because it's a larger exemption. Now, I think in the time we've been doing this, once the exemption went up, it never really went back down again over time. Right. Um, so historically, you would think that the, once the exemption gets to a certain level, it's going to kind of stay at that level. That doesn't mean they can't attack these other things and, and clamp down on them as they've been threatening to do for time. Right, and as the government is dealing with things like debt ceilings and spending cuts, you know, they're going to be looking for potential revenue raisers and some of these things, especially in the estate planning area, are very easy for them to attack. Because they really won't affect the majority of the people anymore. Right, that's correct. So I think the key word or the watchword here is uh, to continue to be vigilant about what we're doing, to be thoughtful about what we're doing, and there are a lot of moving parts to all these things now. It's only gotten more complicated 
requiring more thoughtful attention and real attention to detail. And we must look at this on an individualized basis because everybody's situation, whether it's from an income tax point of view or an estate gift point of view, is very, very different. There is no rule of thumb. Everybody's going to be in a different boat for a lot of different reasons. Scott, thanks for coming out today. You're very welcome, Morty.